I'm David Kirkpatrick. I have a company called Techonomy, and Ford is a partner of ours in what we do, which is to put on conferences and have other kinds of activities for leaders, trying to help them get a grip on the way that technology is transforming business and society, which, as you all know, is tremendously. Um, our main event is in November, right near here at Half Moon Bay. Um, so what we're going to talk about now for the next hour or so, and we have some really great speakers to do it, is how automation and robotics in particular is changing the landscape of society. So self-driving cars, of course, will be a central part of our discussion. But it's not going to just be about that. It's going to be sort of about the, the way the mood of society might shift, the way our attitudes, our thinking might have to shift, mm -hmm. the way our lives may change as individuals, as employees and workers, uh, as citizens, and how you know it may just feel to be in a world where there's a lot more automation than there is today. Uh, you'll hear a lot about how much there already is today. Uh, and I'm struck, frankly, by how quickly we're moving in the direction of an automated society. Um, I mean, just in terms of cars, you know, there already are cars that are basically sold today that have the capacity, that are being driven today, that have the capacity, though it hasn't been turned on, to drive to come pick you up. <coughs> um, but anyway, um, <laughs> it's happening. And meanwhile, I have a. Uh, an Amazon Echo. I don't know who else here has an Amazon Echo. Well, I'm sure anyone who has one will be will relate to this one thing about the Echo, which is a, a really interesting device you can talk to. It's kind of like Siri in your living room. And uh, when you say something to it, you say Alexa, is a call word for it, and then you can say anything you want. But when it, you say Alexa, this little light spins around the top and then it points right at you. And you don't, if you're standing over there, it points over there. And it has this weird feeling of quasi-sentience, you know, you're like, it seems like it's sort of you want to relate to it because it knows where you are. Um, and I, by the way, just noticed this interesting kind of quasi-robotic device just went on general availability on Amazon, and I got an email from them today saying that, and I went and looked, it has 20,000 reviews and four and a half stars on Amazon. So that is really interesting to me. Another thing that I just noticed recently, because I was belatedly catching up on Silicon Valley, the show, uh, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, uh, and there's that great episode where uh, Peter, uh, what his name is, uh, billionaire's uh, autonomous car is driving one of the employees back to, the, to their office in a house, just like Facebook had in Palo Alto, probably, not far from here, most likely. Uh, but somehow it, it gets incorrectly programmed to go to his island state that he's building in the middle of the ocean, which is a libertarian paradise, and the guy gets driven by the autonomous vehicle into a shipping container and shipped to the island for four days. Uh, so we have fantasies in our culture that are very prominent right now about what's going to happen, and, and it's been part of pop culture and, and uh, entertainment for a long time, as our panelists will talk about. But, but on a more serious side, I'm part of a, a group that the Markle Foundation has brought together and just released a book called Rework America, and it's really a, an attempt to try to really stimulate a discussion in the United States in particular about what automation and robotics are going to mean for the future of work, the ability to maintain a middle class, and the continuation of the American dream, because there is a lot of concern that jobs are going to go away in an automated world which will not be a main theme of this discussion, although I think the future of work is going to be part of what you'll hear about in the next hour.